Hi, welcome to The Shtick. I'm Henry Greener and we have with us as our special guest, David Southwick MP. Hi Henry, how are you going? I'm very good. Nice to see you on, on the bench here with me. Thank you Henry, great to be here. Yeah, what's your shtick then, David? I'm the member for Caulfield in the State Parliament of Victoria. And what's your speciality? What's yeah, what's, what do you do? <laughs> what do I do? Uh, well, I'm, I have a responsibility of uh, a chair of the Education and Training Parliamentary Committee. Obviously, uh, a lot of work in the local area of my constituents, but also a big passion in small business innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, a big part of my life is supporting young people to ensure that they fulfil their passions and their dreams. Because innovation these days is a very big part of our future, isn't it? Yeah, look, when we, uh, when we experience uh, so much of what we hear on the news and television about the problems of the world, uh, for me, a lot of those solutions are in the hands of our young people and in the hands of new ideas that are coming around to, to fulfil those particular problems. And uh, I look at my background uh, and um, as a boy attending uh, Mount Scopus and uh, certainly a lot of the leadership that, uh, that prompted me to enter Parliament came from those early years. But also around then schooling was quite different and I think in many respects a lot of that hasn't changed. We need to be really supporting our young people with life skills mm. and, uh, and that was a big passion for me to actually get involved in, in politics. When I uh, uh, left school uh, I attended university, was the only person in my family to do that, and uh, set up a cosmetics company, employed young people, giving you the short run here. Yep. But um, after doing that, uh, then went on to do some work at RMIT, uh, establishing an entrepreneurship program and being RM RMIT's first entrepreneur in residence. And for me, looking at many of those young people that didn't really fit the box, that did that entrepreneurship program, being so successful in their areas, uh, was probably one of the most fulfilling things to see them now. And uh, I'm on a different platform in a different stage and uh, looking on how we can do that in a, in a bigger area and support more people to uh, make a difference in our community. Your background also is in DJing and engaging with the young community as, as a person who was there at every bar mitzvah and all those kids parties. Uh, how, how do you think that affected your relationship with them now? Can you look back at that time? Absolutely. And again, it's another cohort of young people that I went through many of their experiencing many of their lives growing up. And uh, it's a different stage to the stage that I'm playing in now. But it's all the same. You know, how do we connect with people? How do we uh, ensure that, that young people are particularly supported and encouraged? And uh, I really enjoyed those years, those early years. Uh, but I also see a lot of the problems that young people are experiencing. Uh, things like we're, we're in the uh, uh, Youth Drug and Alcohol Week too. Mm. And so how do we support many of our young people in pursuing positive, reinforceable attitudes rather than going down the, the, the road of drugs and alcohol and youth suicide and all the terrible things that we're experiencing in our society right now. There's a show on television that I don't ever miss. It's called The Big Bang Theory. Yes. And uh, it's made being a geek really fashionable and cool. Well, it's funny you say that because as the chair of the Education and Training Committee, we've just released a report around gifted and talented kids. Mm. I was talking yes, to you about that right. before. And uh, many of those young people, uh, which we've done the research on, uh, have been effectively uh, bullied, they have all the behavioural and social skills and in fact the young people that you would think would be the ones that would make such a difference. We've had many of those drop out at year 10 level and just not supported. So one of our recommendations is a statewide policy to support our young people. And probably if you look at that to what's happening in Israel at the moment mm. and how young people have been encouraged <laughs> and supported at those early ages, uh, for me it's a really an opportunity that's gone missing. And we have to ensure that those young people, like in the Big Bang, bang, bang Theory, <laughs> uh, are the cool kids and That's the right. kids that are the ones that bring everybody along with them in, uh, in, in a way that really lifts the bar. And uh, it's just so important if we really want to invest in brain power. I think Victoria should be the state 
that supports brain power. That should be the new license plate, Victoria Smart State. Smart State, absolutely. We well, well, we don't have much to mine and we don't have some of the um, success stories of the other states, but we do have a great education system that we can improve and, uh, and support many of those young potential leaders of the future through some really good programs and encourage those to be right at the top of the bar. It's so very important to be educated, I think, and I think that the uh, only way that we're going to get anywhere is to educate the children in the right way, to be able to accept new technology, adapt mm. to newer technology, and to take it to the next step, because we're only still only getting there at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you see uh, so many different examples of that, of young people that uh, effectively will teach older people Mm. And so there is this, uh, I'm a great fan of mentoring and I think that we need to get a lot of our great power, uh, the people that have gone through and done so many wonderful things, mentoring our young people. But I think it's a two-way relationship. It when they're mentoring at the young people, then young people are also uh, supporting them. And uh, I have this, uh, I suppose it's a dream, and the dream is that every young person uh, would have a mentor, would have somebody that, that would support them outside of their core family. And vice versa. Absolutely. Well, so work well, both, both ways. ways. Absolutely. And take I think. advantage of the great resources we have in the older people. Correct. We've got experience in, in uh, you know, background in business yes. and ethics and morals, which will give a good uh, standard and, and some sort of a role model. And uh, we're going out now, we're staying with you, David. You're going to be with us for the rest of the I'm show. looking forward to that. Whether you like it or not. No, I'm looking forward to that. We're going through to a uh, bit of uh, talk about and also showing some videos. There is a core of videos on innovation in Israel. Yes. And I think that it is really important that the rest of the world take notice because uh, Israel does get a lot of uh, flack and, yeah. uh, and uh, terrible press about things that you know related to apartheid and racism sure. and everything like that. But ultimately, Israel is really a, a leader in innovation. Israel is a huge success story, and uh, I look forward to talking a bit more about that after the break. Thanks, David. We'll be back after the break with some Israeli innovation. <laughs> 